Hey everybody and welcome back to another home automation quickie. If you're anything like me and you've been in the home automation scene for a little while now messing around with different types of hardware, different configurations uh, within Home Assistant, you might be starting to see that your uh, your configuration files are starting to get a little bit messy. Um, YAML is a nice, a nice format for e ease of reading but it can still get pretty convoluted in there if you, uh, if you have a big configuration or if you have a lot of custom sensors and things like that. Um, so far we've been able to effectively avoid having a really messy automations file. That, that's a big problem with Home Assistant, but uh, because uh, I'd assume most of you are probably using Node-RED like, like I am on this channel, uh, Node-RED does a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of automations and usually the automations file for Home Assistant is sparse if not completely empty. But the same can't be said for the configuration.yaml. Now I, I've done some poking around. I, I like to look at other people's configurations and how other people do things. And I've seen that a lot of users actually start to use an includes directory. And it, it, what that does is it allows you to break up your configuration.yaml file into several tinier files that are more specific to the, um, the type of work that they're doing. So uh, I'll show you my configuration.yaml. I've already started to clean it up a bit, but uh, we'll take an entry that's in mine and we'll make a new include, uh, make a new entry in my includes folder and I'll show you how that process works. So let's take a look. Okay, so a lot of what we're used to seeing, we got a lot of different little, um, you know, sections for configuration of the various uh, different hardware platforms that I'm using. Uh, some commented out configuration uh, as I'm changing versions and testing. But down here at the bottom, I've got a section that I have labeled includes. And you can see that there's a lot of uh, headings that would usually be right in the configuration.yaml, like InfluxDB, uh, my history section, my recorder section, and my notify, some two year hardware sensors and lights. These, instead of being called out explicitly in configuration.yaml, I'm actually calling these out in separate files that are in a directory that I call includes and then slash whatever the file name is. So what happens with these includes is they, when configuration.yaml gets kind of quote unquote compiled uh, on, on start, the uh, application will actually follow these configuration paths and build it out as if it was all in one file uh, for the application to read. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you a quick example of how to do this. I'm gonna take my zone minder config, which is starting to get a little bit um, bigger now as I'm switching versions back and forth and it's kind of becoming an eyesore in my configuration.yaml. I'm gonna make an includes for it. And I'm going to do it in a different editor than Vi this time, uh, since there's going to be a little bit of file switching going on. So for ease of use, I'll do it in Atom. So I'll quit this, and we'll go to Atom. Okay, so here's my configuration.yaml in Atom. And I'm going to make sure that my includes directory is expanded here, and we can see that it is. And I'm going to make a new file inside my includes, and I'm going to call it zoneminder.yaml. Okay, so now we're in my new zoneminder.yaml. I'm going to give it a new pane. By the way, if anyone is wondering uh, what text editor this is, this is uh, a text editor called Atom, and I really can't recommend it enough. It's cross-platform. It works really nice um, for any kind of uh, coding operation that you're doing. It's got great syntax highlighting, tons of plugins, very customizable. Anyway, there's my commercial spot for Atom. I promise you they're not paying me. I really wish they were. So I'm going to take my zoneminder configuration here and I'm going to create a zone minder includes so I'm going to lay it out just like it is up there I'm going to start with the heading zone minder and I'm just going to call out include and then the path and that's the same uh, file name that we have above so now I can take this part completely out since the, the, the new call out is down below, so this is going to disappear. But this portion of it, including the two spaces, is going to come into my new configuration file. And it's really important that we include the indentation. So for me, my indentation is, is a double space. For some of you, it might be a, a tab. But uh, always replicate the same indentation in the new file, because like I said, it takes what's in these includes files and it builds it out exactly into the configuration.yaml on uh, on start of the app. So I'll paste that in. So you can see that we've got the double spacing. I can also remove this heading. Uh, 
I'll still keep the commented values out. Now this is this is I keep what I have going on here is I've, I'm trying two different versions of ZoneMinder and I switch back and forth. So I always keep one commented, one uncommented. This is just something that's specific to my example here. It's not going to be part of your setup, obviously. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I've created the new uh, the new file. I've populated the new file with the same values, and I've at this point removed it completely from my configuration.yaml. The new configuration.yaml zone minor entry is right here, and it'll be built out as part of the app start, the configuration read on the app start. So all last step to do is save this, save this, and let's go restart Home Assistant. Okay, Home Assistant's restarted. I'll open up the browser window. You have to excuse me here, I'm getting used to my new display. Okay, uh, okay, and we'll log in and we can see that the zone minder plugin is indeed working. I've got my, uh, you know, my camera views showing up in, in Home Assistant. Please don't mind my super messy Home Assistant layout here. I'm actually working on a Lovelace UI and getting familiarized with that so that I can make a video for you guys that'll that'll show that off and, and kind of give you give me a more sane you know, a layout for using my home automation system through Home Assistant. Anyway, uh, I've gone way over time again. Uh, these home automation quickies are uh, <laughs> proving to be a bit of a challenge for me, but um, thank you for tuning in. I hope uh, I hope you learned something. Is there anything else you want to know? Leave something in the comments if you want to, you know, yada, 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 end of video YouTube guy stuff. See you guys.